Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for June 17th, 2019. I'm teaching a series entitled The Power of Fellowship, and this is part 33 of the series, and uh, I trust that this series has just been a blessing to you. I tell you what, it's been a blessing to me. I've been getting a lot of good feedback. I'm excited about these messages, and so the last message I shared with you on Friday was entitled The Holy Spirit Reveals. The Holy Spirit is at, at able to reveal to us things that have been previously concealed from us. And today's message is going to flow in that same vein. The title of today's message is the Holy Spirit guides. He guides. I mean, he literally guides us. So Friday's message was based on 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and you should read that when you get a chance. And today's message is based on John 16 and 13. So this is what Jesus said in John 16 and 13. He says, when he, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you into all truth or guide you into all truth. He says he will not speak his own words. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what will happen in the future. So he's saying, man, the Holy Spirit is going to come. He's saying now, right now, you know, I got, I got to leave guys. This is what Jesus was telling his disciples. It was like, no, Jesus don't leave. You know, they look to Jesus for everything. He says, don't worry. I'm going to give you another another one just like me. The father is going to give you another one just like me. But this one, me, that God gave you was in bodily form. The next one he gives you is going to be in spirit form. I am with you, but he shall be in you. And so he's going to guide you and he's going to guide you just like I'm guiding you, but I'm guiding you externally. He's going to guide you internally. And this guide, if you listen to him, he will tell you things about the future. He already knows the future. He's already been there. And so he's going to come back and guide you into the future. He's going to guide you into becoming the best version of yourself. He's going to guide you into God's destiny for you, a destiny that was established before the world began. And so the picture that I really want to paint this morning is something that uh, I heard this weekend. So this weekend on this past Saturday, Isabella and I were in Philadelphia um, at a men's conference sitting on a panel. So they had at a men's conference, they had like a women's panel. And so there were men and women on this panel. Isabella and I were there. And one of the pastors talked about a guide, like going through the Grand Canyon. And he said, well, this is Pastor Robert Randolph Davis, a friend of mine. So he said, well, you can, uh, there are some people that go through the Grand Canyon without a guide. And there are some people that use the guide. Now, some people, those that choose to use the guide, they actually get the most out of the experience. um, And they get to avoid the dangers and the pitfalls and the, you know, really they get to avoid the possible pain that they could experience without the guide. Why? Because the guide has already been where he's taking you. (laughs) So since the guide has already been there and the guy will be like, okay, well, listen, I've already been there. Possibly I've made mistakes. So I'm not going to, you don't have to make the mistakes on your own. You can learn the lessons from me. So the guide guides you where he has already been or she has already been. And the guide helps you to avoid pitfalls And the guide helps you to make the most of the experience. So you come back after that and you come back, you know, amazed. You took great pictures. You're happy. Your kids are happy. All of that. Or you can stubbornly say, no, I don't need a guide. I'm going to do it myself. And and, and you're doing it out of pride. Go ahead. Either at best, you just kind of went and you didn't get the most out of the experience. But at worst, you go out there and you come back. And you come back looking <laughs> terrible because you've been through some bad experiences. Why? Because you were you were doing it on your own when that's foolish because you actually had the opportunity to leverage a God. So if you have the opportunity to leverage the services of a God, why not do that? Especially if the God has already been where he or she is leading you, right? So that's kind of the picture that I'm painting today. And now, but I'm doing this for life. Forget the Grand Canyon. I'm talking about life. Well, in life, God offers us a guide. His name is Holy Spirit. And so some of us accept the guide and are like, yeah, lead me. And we follow where the Holy Spirit is leading us. And we live a spirit led life. And the Holy Spirit has already been where he's taken us, right? So we got to trust him. Or some of us, even with the Holy Spirit born again, stubbornly, because of pride, stubbornly live life on our own, making my own decisions. I'm going to do things my way. And then you just, you're going to have to live with the repercussions of it. So what does this mean to you today? This Monday morning, as we set the tone for the whole week, what does this mean to you today about the guide and how you can have a guide and then either use him or not use him? 
Seven things to share with you on this morning as it relates to the Holy Spirit being our guide for life. Seven things. Here we go. You ready? Number one, God has given you, if you're born again, look at me. If you're born again, if you're not born again, you need to accept Jesus as Lord so you can be born again. And once you are, God will give you a spirit. So if you are born again, God has already given you a spirit and his spirit is in you to help guide you through life. Now, this is the key. The Holy Spirit knows what's down the road. You don't. The Holy Spirit knows what's around the corner. You don't. So if you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, then he can help you to avoid the mistakes that you possibly could have made on your own. He can help you to avoid the dangers and the pitfalls. And so, and at the same time, not only will he help you to avoid the bad things, but he will enable you to make the good decisions, right? He will empower you to make the good decisions so that you can experience God's best, so that you can make the most of every situation, so that you can make the most of every opportunity. Why? Because you are actually being led and guided by God himself in the form of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Number two, the Holy Spirit has already been to your future. And this is the key. The whole, I mean, all the days, David said, all the days of my life, Psalms 139, were mapped out before you in a book and they were written before I ever live one day. So God, God already mapped out your life. And so, so the Holy Spirit has already been to your future. He now comes back and he's like, all right, well, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Let me guide you down the road to your destiny. Let me guide you to become the man, the woman that you are destined to be. And then unfortunately, many of us, we fight his leading and we ignore his promptings. Holy Spirit says, no, don't do that. We do it anyway. Holy Spirit goes, says, go left and we go right. And when we do that, we are running, we are doing this at our own peril. We are running the risk of missing out on God's best because God gave us a guide and we are stubbornly refusing his services. <laughs> Number three, like a person who, because of pride, refuses the services of a guide at the Grand Canyon, like I talked about, and it says, you know what, I'm going to do everything on my own. There are some people who just do that with the Holy Spirit. They, they resist God, right? They resist or they flat out ignore, like they know this is God. God is telling me to do this and they flat out ignore him. They ignore his divine promptings. They are determined to do life on their own. And I tell you what, if that's you, if you haven't realized it yet, if you haven't come to the realization of the error of your ways, then I trust that even in this message, you're, you're acknowledging it because if you stubbornly just say, I'm going to make my own decisions, I'm going to do life on my own, you can go ahead. But if you do life on your own, um, you're going to miss out on God's best because there's no way that you can, You matter of fact, the Bible basically says that you're going to loosely stumble your way through life because you won't have vision. If The vision that God gives you is going to lead you into God's best. But if you try to do it on your own, then you're making decisions without God and you are going to loosely stumble your way through life and you will never really become the best version of yourself because you're doing it and, and not God. And, and God already destined for you to be someone. Why not become the man, the woman that God destined you to be? Number four, if you had the chance of doing something, let's just take it to the natural. If you had the chance of doing something that you've never done before, and then there's a guide that's going to help you with the journey. And, and uh, the guide has already done it before. The guide already knows, you know, when to turn left and when to turn right. And the guide says, I want to offer you my services. Are you going to take those services or are you going to say, no, I want to do this thing on my own? If you say, I'm going to do it on my own, then you're going to have to deal with the consequences of it. If it's your will, then it's your bill, right? At the end of the day, if you make a decision and it's your will, then when it comes time to pay for it, it's going to be your bill. But if it's God's will, then it's God's bill. So if you're being led, then you can put the pressure on God and not you. And there are many times where I'm like, Lord, you told me to do this. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but you told me to do it. So you got to come up with the money, not me. Uh, Lord, you told me to do this. So I, I see this person is acting crazy, but you told me to do it. So I'm just trusting that you will touch his heart, her heart, whatever. Wherever God leads, he feeds. Wherever he guides, he provides. And this is a much better way to live because now you're simply being led. It is the spirit led life. You have a guide for life and you're allowing the guide to guide you. 
That's how we're supposed to live. Number five, many people are struggling their way through life unnecessarily. They have the Holy Spirit, but then they just refuse the Holy Spirit to lead. They refuse to be led of the Holy Spirit, right? Don't allow pride to cause you to live life on your own. Even filled with the Holy Spirit, don't allow pride to cause you to ignore the Holy Spirit because you just want to be like your own man. Listen, there, there are two positions that you need to fill every day, the throne and the cross. And so if Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. If you take up the cross, that means that you're dying daily. You're dying to self every day. That means that Jesus is on the throne and he is, he is the Lord of your life. At that point, the Holy Spirit can lead God and direct you. But if you say, you know what, I'm, I'm big, bad, and bold, and I'm going to make my own decisions. Well, that means you're on the throne. You're making your own decisions. That means that in your life, Jesus is still on the cross and he's dead to you. Fine. You can make your own decisions, but you're going to have to live with the decisions that you make. Number six, you can be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and still refuse the Holy Spirit. You can still refuse his guidings. You can, you can still not allow the guide to guide you. And if you do that, you run the risk of missing out on God's best. Wouldn't it be a shame to get to heaven and then just to realize all the things that you could have done, all the things that you could have experienced, the, the impact that you could have made in this world, but you didn't do any of those things because you refused to listen to the Holy Spirit. Number seven, and finally, you can live a good life by just reading God's word and doing what it says, the written word. You can live a good life by just reading the word of God and doing what it says, but you will never maximize your purpose and potential without listening to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what I'm saying. You have the Bible. You can go to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and you can read the Bible every day and do what it says and live a good life. But you will never maximize the purpose and potential God placed inside of you until you listen to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to tell, tell you things that really is not written in black and white. And, and the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to live the best version of yourself, to make the impact that you were destined to make. And you're not going to get that just from reading a scripture. You're going to get that by listening to the Holy Spirit. My prayer for you is that you allow the guide to guide you. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. It's Monday morning. Let's set the tone for the whole week. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for giving me a guide to help lead, guide, and direct me through life. This guide is your spirit. Holy Spirit lives in me. Now, there was a time in my life when I just didn't know his voice. And then there was a time in my life where I refused his promptings. But I declare that those days are over. I am led of your spirit in all things, at all times. I allow myself to be led. I humble myself to your will. I refuse to make decisions on my own. My life is not about me. My life is all about you. So your spirit guides me. I listen, and by doing so, I get to maximize the purpose and the potential that you place inside of me before the world began. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, then go to todaysword.org and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Listen, this Monday morning, right now, Make a decision that you're going to head into this day, that you're going to listen to the Holy Spirit, and that you're going to allow him to guide you into all truth, into all things, into the things that God already planned for you to experience. This is the only way that you will leave the mark in this world that you are destined to leave. Do me a favor. Before you leave the screen, please share this message on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. Leave me a comment. Let's share this message and let's let everyone everywhere know that God has given us a guide. It's a guide for life, and his name is Holy Spirit. It's time for us to allow the guide to guide us. God bless you.